preparing for this talk, I found that closer. Okay. <laughs> preparing for the talk, I found that um, some of the stuff that I wanted to talk about was was fairly involved, and so what I thought I'd do is start off with a just a quick review of Monticello One for for those of us who don't use it. I know not everyone here is a squeaker, and even if you are, you might not be using Monticello. So. Um, I'll just uh, do a quick overview here. The, uh, the whole idea with Monticello is that it was a, a light overlay on top of Squeak. It didn't do deep system integration. It didn't you know, put its claws everywhere and monitor what you're doing. So uh, the first thing we needed was an actual sort of package structure for Squeak. Uh, and so we used what, what's called package info. And that's just a, a convention that's used in naming class categories and method categories. Uh, More, OK. <laughs> um, and so you'll be familiar with the little star extension methods that, that are used for this. Uh, the next thing about Monticello 1 that's sort of interesting is that repositories are just any collection of versions. They can be in a directory, they can be on a file server, FTP, HTTP, it doesn't really matter. The tool can make use of some collection of files that has versioning information. And of course they're stored in what we call MCZ files. They're just zip files with a couple of uh, files embedded in them that has the source code and the versioning data, the ancestry. So it's a very simple system, just something we wrote to get up and running when, when we were having to do some, some work in Squeak. And there's a lot of shortcomings with Monticello 1. Um, I actually had a slide here that went into gory detail about everything that's wrong with it. And, and I figured let's not dwell on that. But one thing it does quite well actually is merging. And uh, for me, merging is the key thing in any, in any version control system. If you don't have good merging, you might as well just save a copy of your image every, every time you make a change or every day. And you're, you're essentially doing the same thing as, as using a version control system with no merging. So I want to walk through. Uh, sort of a scenario of that, that comes up often. Um, it's, called a, uh, it's called a repeated merge. And this <coughs> diagram is, is a sort of basic uh, thing that happens a lot, right? You have the trunk, development proceeds linearly, and then you've got a branch where someone's working on an experimental feature or fixing a nasty bug or something like that. So. They, they both start off with the base version, and then you get a mainline commit. Someone does the branch, another mainline commit, and a merge. Okay, so someone's working on a feature, they fix a bug that they stumble across, and they want to move that into the trunk. So they do a merge there. Then mainline trunk uh, development proceeds. We get some, uh, the feature is complete, and we want to merge again. And this is, a, this is the second merge. So I wanna just want to demo this, and I'm not sure how to stop the presentation here. So I'm going to start off with a, a little demo in visual work. Oh, I the wrong side. Thanks. OK, I'm just going to sit down so I can do this demo. Um,
Okay, so this is going to be a really, really simple package here. Um, one class, one method. And it's just going to return a number for us. So check the state of this. Okay, so there's nothing in the repository. So the first thing we'll do is save that base version. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't actually even see this. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, but then I'm going to be switching back and forth all the time. So this is this is better. I'll try this way. Okay, so we'll just publish this version. Now I've got another image here. This th this is the trunk image. We'll do the um, the branch image as well. Someone else is working on a branch. Try not to get confused. by which one is which. Uh, okay. So on the branch, we're going to have a different version of this method. And we'll publish that as well. So back on the trunk, we're going to do that first merge. So browse versions here. Looks like I, I didn't publish the base version, so I'm just going to publish another version here. I hope that this would be less confusing. I was trying to make the simplest possible explanation of this, of this scenario that I could, and now I myself have con I am confused. So <laughs> just bear with me while I sort this out. Uh, okay, so this is the branch.
So this is the trunk, and we're going to merge in our package. can't hear you, I'm sorry. I haven't got a branch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Problem here is I can't tell which image is which. <laughs> Let me just, uh, there we go, that's better. So, on the branch we're going to use motif. So now we'll publish a branch version. It's not a branch version. Again. <laughs> oh, the lowest. Yeah, I reconciled with the wrong one. Okay. There we go. Here's a branch. <coughs> All right. So now So, we're going to do a merge now. And of course, we get a conflict. This is exactly what we want because we've changed the method in both images. So we can uh, let's uh, let's see what else. Apply that. We'll publish this. Oh. Now, let's make a new version on the trunk. Publish that. And I'll go over here to the branch and make another change. Uh, this time I'm going to just add a method, shouldn't conflict. Uh, 
push that. And then we're going to do our second merge. So what we see here is we've got a second conflict. This is, this is the same method that we merged previously, we resolved that conflict, and now we're doing a second merge. Store should be telling us that this, is, store should be able to resolve this by itself, but it's asking us for help. And the reason is because it doesn't quite have enough ancestry information to make this merge properly. Now this is a really simple example, and I got confused, and I'm sure many of you got confused. Um, so imagine if you know you've got long branches with 30 commits on them, complicated changes. You did a merge. You did a merge. You resolved the conflicts when they were fresh in your mind. Now it's two months later, and you're trying to integrate this, and you can't remember what you did with the resolution. And it's difficult. I've run into this myself. I'm not saying this to pick on store or or, or anything like that. It, there's a lot of version control systems that don't do this properly. Um, it's, it's actually a sort of hard problem. But uh, I hope this gives you an idea of, of why it's important to be able to do proper merges and, and what you can get into if, if you can't do that. So let's get out of VisualWorks here. Okay, so did I just before I move on? Is anyone not clear on what happened here? Does anyone understand that? Okay, so that's that's a basic scenario where uh, where Monticello does get merging right. Now the next the next thing that comes up um, is what's called cherry picking. Whereas when you do a merge and you want some of the changes that are on that branch, but not all of them. And, and for years, Monticello did not support this properly. Store does it quite well. You just don't apply the changes that you don't want. Your merge proceeds, and everything works fine. Um, that's. Let me just go into a little bit more explanation of this. This is um, the same kind of scenario. You've got a, a trunk and a branch. You want to do a merge that merges some of your changes on the branch into the trunk. Monticello won't let you do that. What it does let you do, though, is uh, what we call backtracking. So in that case, what, what it will do is it lets you backport some of the changes that you have, in, in, in this case, in B2, and apply them to T1. So it, it's sort of saying, well, if at the time I had only done some of these changes based on T1, I could have saved my image and I would have gotten C1. So it does that for you. And then you can do the merge you wanted to do in the first place from this, this new branch that's been created into the trunk. So you get the results you wanted with the correct history but it's a little bit awkward. And so this we, we had this situation for a few years with Monticello, and it was, you know, we it worked okay, but it was confusing. We got a lot of questions about it, and we were always thinking about how can we make this better? What what would be a, a more ideal situation? So um, eventually we came up with the idea that would form the basis of Monticello 2. And 
the big idea there is that it's much better if you store the ancestry information, the version history, for each method instead of for each package. Um, so in in Monticello 2, the the version th this this is how a version of a method is modeled. Um, the version has what's called a hash stamp. That's basically a UUID. It has a variant, which is the state of that method in this version. And it'll, the, the element is part of that. That'll tell you which method it is, what class and what selector it should have. And then the properties, which are the source code, the timestamp, the author's initials, method category, everything that you need to know to recreate that method as it was in the image when it was saved. And then the ancestry is just a simple set of hash stamps that refer to other versions of the method that are in its past. These are versions of the method that have been changed and eventually resulted in the version of the method that we have now. So I'm going to do a quick backtrack here. And we'll go back to that repeated merge example. What Monticello 1 does when you do a merge is it finds the, the, sh the nearest common ancestor of the two versions. So we're merging 1.0.2 into 1.3 here. And it'll go back up the history chain and find that the common ancestor is, is on the branch. And, it's, and it follows that, that merge link uh, between 1.2 and 1.0.1 to find that ancestor. Um, and incidentally, the, the reason that store doesn't do that merge is because it does, does this. It, it doesn't follow that merge link, and, and it ends up with an earlier ancestor. And there's a, the conflict is in, in the changes that I've, uh, that I've highlighted and read there. Um, in any case, we then get the changes since the common ancestor on the branch. We compare them to the changes that are in the trunk, find any conflicts, resolve them, and then apply those changes that have been resolved to the trunk to get the new version. Now, that's the Monticello 1 algorithm. The Monticello 2 algorithm is much simpler. We just get we match up the methods in each, in each snapshot and say, OK, here's the method from the image, and here's the method that's being merged in that's in the repository. Each of those versions will have a hash stamp and a set of ancestors, which are also hash stamps. And then we just compare. Is We just check if the, if the hash stamp of the version that's in the image is in the set of ancestors that we're merging in. And in this case, you can see it's not. <coughs> or do we have the other case where the version that we're merging in does have a, is in the ancestry of the version that's in the image? So we can just say, OK, the version in the image is newer than the one that's being merged in because it's in the history. And therefore, we know which version to use. It's, it's pretty straightforward. It, it, instead of all of that graph traversal stuff that Monticello 1 does, this just does set membership queries. Uh, now, if, if you have two versions where neither one of them is in the ancestor of the other, that's conflict. 
So what we do in that case is allow the user to resolve the config, pick a, pick a version, and then we create a new version that has the variant of the method that the user selected and the union of the ancestries of, of the two methods that were being merged. Can't hear me? Oh. Okay. So this this is a much simpler merge algorithm. And the next thing that we realized here uh, are I was wondering uh, if you can make that uh, simplifying assumption there because does the hash stamp include the timestamp too or? It does. Okay. In that the, case. Yeah, originally it was, we called it a hash stamp because it was four bytes of timestamp and 20 bytes of SHA1 hash of the content okay, okay. so there would be no collisions. Um, what we found is that hashing the content of uh, let's see here. Hashing the content of of this, we had to serialize this this uh, little graph of objects, and then hash the bytes yes. that that were produced. And that what that meant is that we can never change the the you know the instance variables or those or the meaning of or, or the structure of these of this model, right? Mm -hmm. And we found that to be problematic. So instead of using hashes, they're just, it's just a random number with an internal checksum now. So there's a timestamp and, and some random bytes and a, and a checksum. Okay, the, the, the issue that seemed to be there t to me was making the assumption that if the, if the method looks like something that we had before in the history, that doesn't automatically imply it's an old method because you may have come back to the original version naturally in the course of development. So that's what I was wondering. That, but I mean, if the if the stamp includes the timestamp, then you can certainly conclude that this is an old method. Yeah. So that that would be right, and it, that it's would be important. In yeah, it's looking at it's looking at the UUID um, and not the con. It what it does is it checks the the class and selector, you know when you're merging two snapshots, it finds the corresponding class and selector. And then, then it just looks at, these, at this collection of hash stamps. Okay. So it's not actually trying to find you know, the same source code or something like that. OK. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Another question? So could you wait the next slide this is on uh, slides Yeah Okay so could you repeat slowly what you said there for the algorithm Oh for this ex for this for slide the, <coughs> I don't know if this is this one or the, the, just the mm. one before uh, the the slice the Yeah okay So Okay when when you're merging uh, two snapshots of a package. The, the contents of those snapshots are basically just a, a whole series of method versions, right? And it has that, that structure that I pointed out earlier with, with an element that tells you, okay, this is, you know, string uh, length. And each of those has an ID a unique ID that's, that's generated when, it, when that snapshot is saved. It also has history of the IDs of previous versions of that same method, that the ones that, that this version is newer than. And, and I don't mean newer in a, in a chronological sense, but, but newer in the sense of 
somebody looked at an old version of this method, made a change, and, and came up with a newer version of this method. And so for each version, we have, we have a, a set of, of other versions that this should be newer than. And so when we're comparing two of them, we just look, okay, is this one in that history of stuff that's older? Well, no. If you look at the one, the, the, U, the, the hash stamp that's in at the top there underneath the word image, it's not in the set of ancestry for the one that, uh, on the right. <laughs> Hello? Okay. Yeah. No. What I was just wondering is that I had the impression that you said that if uh, between the two versions uh, they are not in the history of each other, this is a conflict. Yes. And I thought, why this is not because you can have a conflict even if you have a common ancestor. Because you have a common ancestor and we, 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 we branch. We are in conflict. That you, you do have common ancestors. W yes, yeah. you can have that. But what you won't have is, okay, let's, so think, of it as a family, this, yeah. let's think of it as a family tree, right? A conflict yeah. is when you have cousins. Yeah. yeah. But what's not a conflict is a direct ancestor. Okay. Right? So in this case, the, the okay. hash stamp for the, re the version that's being merged in is, is in the direct ancestry of, of what's in the image already. Okay. Okay, so any, any more questions? Yeah. <laughs> um. So if I understand correctly, these hashes, what you call hash stamps, are not hashes but GUIDs? Uh, effectively, yes. They, they don't, they're not an instance of UUID, but they're large numbers that are very unlikely to, over, to, to, be, to collide. Okay. So it's just to confuse us. <laughs> Well, th th there was some history there. I mean, it, it did used to actually have, used to have an SHA-1 hash, okay. and, and that was changed to be problem for, because it was problematic, but um, the, the terminology hash stamp is all over the place, and <laughs> I figured it would be easier to redefine it than change it. Hmm. Think okay. of it as a UUID. All right, thanks. Um, anyone else? Okay, so the thing that jumps out from this is that if you're merging two snapshots, all of the merging is done down at the method level. You don't need to do that, you know, looking for the common ancestor at the package level that, that Monticello 1 does. And what that means is that you can merge things that don't have the same package structure. In Monticello 1 and in store, and even in file-based systems like Git or Mercurial, they're very sensitive to uh, the boundaries of the packages that you have. If, if you decide that, okay, I've got you know, three packages and I'm going to split them into five packages, there's no way to, to split up the version history there anymore. The, the version history is attached to the package, and if that package goes away, well, you lose the history. We ran into this in Squeak where, you know, we had this spaghetti image that was very hard to, to split apart. And so uh, it's, been, it's been going on for... I don't know, five years now that we've been splitting it, gradually disentangling things, figuring out where the package boundaries should be, moving stuff between packages. And when you do that, you lose history. Even in Monticello 1, I mean, there was an improvement over chain sets, but you lose a lot of the history that you have because you're changing the package structure and the history is tied to that. So what we realized with Monticello 2 is the history follows methods. And you can re jigger the package structure anytime you like 
and the merging will still work. So then we thought, okay, well, let's, let's allow different kinds of ways of organizing your system and make versioning work with that. So we introduced this idea called slices. And the slice is, just as it says, an arbitrary slice of the image. Any, a slice just defines parts of the image that are inside the slice and parts of the image that are outside the slice. That's essentially what a package does as well. And a package is one kind of slice. Um, another kind of slice is a change set. A change set is a sort of an explicit list of methods that I've touched while I was working on a particular task. And the system will kind of keep that up to date as I make changes. Uh, so we defined a, a change set slice and then essentially made something that is considered versionable changes, change sets. And we also have uh, what's called an explicit slice, which is just a collection of methods. It, it, it never changes. It's, it's what you put in the collection. And it's, in practice, it's not that useful for development because you, you want something that follows your, uh, adapts to the changes that you're making in the system. But it's great for testing and, and the occasional odd little, oh, I need, a, I need a package with just one method, that, that kind of thing. So the next thing I want to do here is another demo. So, <laughs> it's week it's a bit easier because we have we can have colored backgrounds. All right. So, let's imagine this scenario. We have a, a again a simple package called Sandbox, and we have someone maintaining that package. Uh, they're they're accepting changes from the community, integrating them, and and uh, and releasing new versions of the package periodically. Um, on the other hand, we have some general contributor who is making one of those cross-cutting changes, some some refactoring that touches dozens of packages. What we're going to do is have the package maintainer work with a package slice, and the the sort of at-large contributor work with a change set slice, and we'll merge the change set into the package uh, so that to integrate that contributor's changes. So. Here we go. In, the, in this blue image, that's the maintainer's image. And we have a, our same situation here. Uh, we've, we've just saved a base version into our repository. So over here on the contributor's side, we, we've loaded that same version into the image. And what we'll do is we'll start a change set. Let's, let's go and uh, fix a bug. Now you can see that showing up in the change set here. Uh, and then let's say that somewhere else we need to add something. And 
that will also be in the change set. Okay, so we have a change set slice here that corresponds to that change set. We'll save a snapshot of it. Now, we're going to do a thing that's a little bit similar to uh, Mercurial or Git. We'll push to a repository that I've got on disk um, so that we can get at it from another image. We'll go there. You can see we it's got the snapshot that we just saved. We'll pull that into our image here. Now, in the meantime, our, our package maintainer has been busy and has created a new version of this method. So we should have a conflict, right? The, the bug fix has, has touched the method, and so has the mainline development of the package. So let's save that. And now we're going to integrate that bug fix. So the, uh, the Monticello 2 terminologies include. We'll do that. And you can see here, this is the extra method in, in some other package that was, that was provided as part of the change set. And here's the conflicted method that was also touched at the same time as the, as the package maintainer did. And we have a conflict. So our, uh, our package maintainer can look at that and say, all right, well, I like my version better than his. And, and you see here, this is, this is the local meth version that's in the image. This is the remote version, the one that we're merging in. And now that we've chosen the local method, uh, this is the resolution. We can we can choose the other one, choose remote. Uh, but let's choose local. Next thing we do is it's sort of like store. We apply all the changes, and we're done. We can save a new version of this package. Did I hit it there? Yeah, actually, I think what's happening is that it's saying it's not dirty because <laughs> it because we have the same version. The the new method is not included in that slice. That's right. Um, let's uh, let's try that again. We still have a conflict. There we go. That's actually a bug, by the way. I should be able to. I should be able to choose my local version and, and still have it resolve the conflict. Uh, you can. Uh, the this is the bleeding edge version, and some things may not work. But yes, in principle, you certainly can. But when you merged in the contributors version, shouldn't that method be in the ancestry? So, you, so the sandbox package should get dirty. Yes, that's true. That's true. As I mentioned, that's a that's a bug. So that's the bug. Yeah. Well. Okay. Or uh, because you rejected that thing, uh, it's not even in the ancestry. Right. It. it there are, there are actually two bugs that we just saw. One is that I, merged, I rejected his, his fix 
that should be recorded and I should be able to save a version that says, yeah, I know about that, but I'm not interested. Um, the other one is that I, th I think you probably can't create a brand new integrated version that, that had, was a different implementation, which is what Martin asked, which, yes, it, you know, the, the UI won't let you do that, but as far as the, the, um, the merging scheme works, that, w that works perfectly well. Uh, yes, I wanted to ask, in the previous example, is the method were uh, more complex that just answer a number, are you able to take parts from each of the method for the final version instead of I want this version completely or this version completely just to select pieces of code and get the, the resulting? Yes, uh, that I think that's pretty much the same question that Martin asked. Um, you can you can, you, given the two versions that you're merging, you can create a third implementation and use that with, and have it supersede both of the merged versions. Um, right now there's no like automatic text diffing that, that does that for you. You'd have to edit, hand edit the method to do that. Uh, I have two questions. First, uh, when you rename a method, is the ancestry uh, history kept? Uh, no, it's okay. Uh, we that, that would be it's it's really a hard thing, and we would like to do that. It's uh, not in this version. <laughs> okay, then that's a feature request. And the yeah. second <laughs> one is: uh, has anything done to the issue of encoding? Coding. Uh, now, um, when I save a Faro uh, uh, image and I load it in Glass, I might end up having bad characters because it's not uh, uh, uniform encoding. Yes. Um, the when you save a method, the source code is. Uh, when it's serialized into the repository, it's always serialized as UTF-8. Uh, well, I should, it could also be serialized as UTF-16 if that's a better encoding for the string in, in question. Um, and when you load it back out of the repository, it it will get serialized, deserialized back into the native encoding. So if you're moving between platforms, the the porter the the platform maintainer has to make sure that that serialization works correctly, but you know yeah it should. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, what about classes? Uh, how uh, how do you merge uh, conflicts uh, with uh, in case when let's say I I am. I Add that uh, an instance variable or remove it. Is this similar to methods? It, yeah, I, I haven't. I kind of glossed over that, but um, every time I say method in in the last and any time in this talk, it it actually could apply to classes, instance variables, uh, class comments, shared pools, pool imports. Um, class variables, they're all versioned separately and have their own version history. Which incidentally means that you can extend a class with an instance variable in Monticello 2. Uh, there's the, the underlying package info doesn't have any way to encode that right now, so if you create uh, a package info class that extends another um, package, you can only do it with, with methods right now. But at some point, I would like to have a proper package implementation that lets you extend with instance variables, for example, or class variables or whatever. 
even comments. <laughs> so you said only the source code is um, versioned, uh, put into the repository, um, or is no. the style preserved too? Um, no, the at the moment the just the text of the source code is is preserved. Okay. Um, it doesn't do style. It does preserve, you know, timestamps and author initials and things like that, but it doesn't do styles. That could be done. Okay. Anyone else? Okay, uh, I guess that's it. Um, thanks for getting up so early and, and being here on time. Um, I really wanted to have a beta that I could release today and, and you know, let people play with, but this is a spare time project and I just couldn't pull it off. I expect to have a new release in the next few weeks, maybe next month, and uh, I hope you get a chance to play with it once, once that's out. Thanks.